We're finally coming to the end of the whirlwind that has been 2020. Over the past few weeks, I've been speaking to local businesses around the Victoria quarter of New Brighton to see how the restrictions have affected the way that they've been able to trade this year. I wanted to focus on just how vital independent businesses are to the local area and how their customers have been affected alongside them. These local independent businesses offer community support that many larger chains, such as supermarkets, simply can't replicate. Here's what some of these businesses had to say. I'm Ian Forber. I've been here since 1980. Uh, traditional fruit and veg. I was only 21 when we came. When the family bought the two shops, we had a grocery shop next door, and this was the fruit and veg. And my mum sold this one to me, and sold the grocery to my auntie. And, uh, but over the years, since 1980, the supermarkets have slowly got more and more. You know, seven days a week, firstly 24 hours, and the, and home deliveries, and that's what's affected the high street especially on the food side, your bakers, fishmongers, butchers, greengrocers, the traditional shops of the high streets have been decimated since 1980. There's not many of us left. And Daniel's idea of Victoria Quarters really worked well, was flying away, flying away with all the activities. And then we had this dreadful COVID in March, uh, which attacked us all, didn't it? We were all affected by it. Although we had a, a bit of a rough ride this year, as everybody has. I think next year, from March onwards, I think this place is gonna take off, I really do. Might be a bit late for me, because I'm 61. I told him a couple of years ago I was thinking of retiring, but maybe somebody, a young couple or a family can take this on and turn it into a, a community shop, which I think is very important for the high street now, that they look at just a food shop on its own is not gonna survive. It, it, to me, it's gotta be a mixture of things. It's gotta be a baker's, a butcher's, all in the one shop a community shop for local people, where they can come and meet and talk. There's a lot of people out there are lonely. They don't talk to anyone during the day. So they like to come and have a chat, or maybe buy a couple of bits of food, have a coffee. I think that's the future for, for the uh, for high streets, is to be community-based. My name's Cathy Roberts, and our business is called Literally a Bookshop. You don't do something like this if you're planning on making money. I think that's important to say um, but we've enjoyed it it's very much a community business it's a hub for the community and it's a lot more than selling books to be honest with you our primary concern was not even so much the lack of any generated income for the shop it was what would happen to the people who come through here because we have people who can come in this shop and they don't buy anything but they'll come and chat and talk and sit. We have people that would just come in because they wouldn't maybe see anybody else for the rest of the day, and they'd just like to see and talk to us. And we suddenly realised that that was being cut off from them, and we were really worried about that. We were lucky, and uh, we've got on the great relationships in this area. I mean, we've got customers, they're friends of ours now, uh, the, the people we know directly, do you know what I mean? Um, they've been keeping us going every day, every, well we're opening a couple of days a week, they're coming down, they're getting their orders in, they're, they're doing as we need them to do, do you know, people have made friends here, this is a place they come to meet, and it's, you can say the same for other pubs as well, but they, for us, it's, it's a hub, it's a meeting point, um, demographically, you know, we, we're getting people from sort of early 20s right through to like our old customers in the 90s and things like that, and they all come here because it's just a nice place to be, and the customers come here are great, and it's, it, it definitely provides them with um, someone to come out and, and just be in a comfortable space, enjoy themselves. And I think a lot of them are missing that, and they, they really encourage us to come back and, and, and get open and stay strong and, and be here when it's all over. And hopefully that's that's what we'll do. Hi, my name's Alison. Uh, my business is Wirral School of Dance, and I've been trading for 30 years. This is actually my 30th year in operation. Big, big change for me. Um, a lot of my colleagues jumped onto online classes straight away. Um, I needed time to process and to um, work out the best way and the safest way 
to continue teaching. Um, and for someone of my age, it was a huge deal because we're just not used to virtual teaching in any way. And in such a physical recreation, it's very, very difficult. How do you keep the kids safe at home? What are they gonna do? You're not there. It's, it's a big responsibility. Obviously, I had to Zoom, I had to pay the rent. Um, you know, I really didn't have an option. I didn't want to get into to debt. <laughs> but still having to pay rent on a building I wasn't using. So it was, it was needs must, really. I regret not setting up a website in March, April. Um, my idea was to sort of tick along and see how we got on. But the other supermarket chains all sort of sped up their internet delivery and uh, they've got the money and the power to do to make these things happen, you know. I'm only a sole trader, so uh, we did it with the phone, you know, people order stuff on the phone, paid through the credit card, then we delivered it on the same night. But I knew inside our prices are dearer than the supermarkets. As I've said, supermarket food is, is below cost price. I'm putting stuff out, and at the time, I'm thinking back now, Mark, supplies of broccoli, collie, vegetables were very scarce and they trebled in price at Liverpool Market in, in the space of a week. So I had to put stuff out a lot dearer than they usually do. And people were sort of getting the impression I was trying to profit from them. It wasn't. I was trying to buy the stuff of my, say a box of broccoli was seven quid usually to buy a box of broccoli, went to 21 pound. So it trebled in price within a few days. So I had to pass that on to the customer. But I couldn't explain to everybody. I was trying to explain what was going on, but they weren't really interested. Basically, I've, I was trying to rip people off, you know, which is, it's, you know, all right, they were getting a box of food, but it was costing a lot more it should have done. So, yeah, it was annoying, but that's, that's what we had to deal with. Bookshops are essential. On a technical note, there's no VAT on books because they are classed as essential items. But that obviously didn't seem to cut it with the government. It's galling for us that a supermarket can sell books, and we can't. But for us now, this is our busy time. For bookshops, November is the busy time. This is the lead up to Christmas. And for any small shop, this is where you, you have your stock, you're ready, and you're going to put all your effort into your sales for this time. I think it's, I think it's, it's absolutely essential that people need to be around other people. People are isolated, it, you know, it, it causes all sorts of problems. Um, and so I don't think that you could say that the spike, the second wave spike could be caused by hospitality, really, because we haven't operated normally since March. The, we seem to be sort of carrying a can for something, somewhat carrying a can for something that really we've had very little impact or very little um, sort of input into. And that, that's quite insulting from a, from a hospitality point of view. As for my business, who knows? I mean, it's, it's, and you know, my, my building would be gone as well. So I'm paying rent on a building that could be torn down this time next year. I might get another year out of it, I don't know. So it's, it doesn't look great. And I'm an optimist by nature, but where I'm gonna find another place with this square footage. And I wanna be in New Brighton, this is where I want to be. This is, you know, it's been a great move for me, so. New Brighton has been a, a strange mixture of customers. You know, it's uh, a lot of students living because there's a lot of flats in New Brighton. Uh, a lot of pensions here because of the residential homes and the flats. Um, so yeah, we got, and then we've got some families in, in, in the mix as well. Again, the pensioners, they like a little chat, like a little talk, um, because sometimes they don't speak to anyone during the day, except when they go out to do a buy a bit of food. So, and again, they can buy small quantities. They don't have to buy a big bag of carrots or onions. They can buy small items, you know, one carrot, one onion, I don't mind. There's no difference, it's still a customer. I'm really worried that we're turning into a, an insular world. And the more time that people are staying at home and going on the internet for everything, they're just looking at themselves. And we're going to be turning, that's what we're doing. So we're just completely dismantling communities and that's the way it feels so as I say we have lots of people come through this shop on a daily basis not so many that buy things but we do have a lot of people coming through and they're the people that I'm worried about I really am